Hey everybody, it's Emily from Life So Savory and today I'm going to be sewing a t-shirt for my son. It's been a while since I've sewed anything for the boys so I thought today was a great um, day to try it and I have a fun idea for a vinyl design um, and so we can always use another plain t-shirt so I can put vinyl on it. So this will probably end up um, being used in a future project but for today we're just going to sew the t-shirt. And I thought I would also show you, and I know I've done this before, but show you a really quick and easy way to change out the threads in your serger because it currently has um, pink and cream, which would not be good for sewing a t-shirt of black fabric. So those are the things that I'm hoping to accomplish today, changing out my serger threads successfully and also sewing a t-shirt and just showing you how easy it is to sew kids, basic kids, for your clothes. So let me go ahead and do my couple of shares here and then we'll go ahead and get started. I'd love for you to say hi, let me know what you're up to, what have you been doing lately. We've been digging ourselves out of the fourth largest snowstorm ever on Denver record, which of course happened middle of March. And um, so it was a eventful weekend with lots and lots of snow and as I look out, there's still two foot drifts um, in my front yard and the streets are plowed, the neighborhood streets are plowed to a single lane. Uh, the main work, or the main um, streets are fine, but the neighborhood streets are a big mess of snow. So it's been interesting when I get out trying to navigate that. So anyway, let me go ahead and just edit a couple things do a couple shares and then we're gonna get started sewing. Um, so that's been our weekend. It was actually really fun. We didn't go anywhere or do anything. We literally stayed home all weekend and just huddled in and it was really, really nice actually. So it was fun. Um, and then we kind of knew it was coming. So the school was able to have the kids do an online day Monday. So we didn't have to try and get out and then, and they got it done in just a few hours. So they still had tons of time to play out in the snow. So it was a good snow day, a good mix of work and play. And then, um, yeah. And then they were back in school Tuesday. So it's, my, when we have a snow day, like or a day off on Monday, my whole week is thrown off. I was, um, I had to do something on Monday, but when I got up Tuesday, I had a note saying it was already late because, you know, my brain gets all off when, um, when mon when the kids are home on Monday, I like can't figure out what's next. So. Anyway, we're doing well. I love the sunshine. It is warm and the snow is dripping off our roof. So it won't be long till things are melted around here. My son was supposed to have his first soccer practice today, but of course there's two feet of snow on the field. So that's not happening. My other son is supposed to have baseball practice on Friday, but we will see if that actually happens as well due to the snow. So spring sports around here are a little bit rough. Um, trying to navigate with the snow. Uh, so okay, let me just show you real quick what um, I've already cut out and then we will head over and start sewing. So like I said, I'm gonna be sewing my son a t-shirt. It's from this black fabric because I realized today I don't have a lot of fabric that my boys would be interested in having t-shirts made. I have a lot of really cute girly fabric right now, so it's probably time to stock up on a few more manly or neutral prints. Uh, but we're just gonna make a plain black t-shirt, which will be cute and easy. And I've cut two sleeves. I've cut a front and a back and a neckband. Okay, so those are all you need and I just was gonna make mention of a way that I like to get a really good fit 
on t-shirt and I'm using my boys free t-shirt pattern. The link is in this, the description of this video. So if you are interested in checking it out, you can go ahead and click the link and grab this shirt and the photo tutorial from there. But I like to take a t-shirt that fits my son really well and then compare it to the pattern pieces. So, um, you know, patterns are a very generalized fit to try and fit as many body types as possible. But if you're trying to create just for your child or yourself, you have the opportunity to customize it a little bit. And so if we have a shirt that fits really well, I like to hold it up to the pattern pieces and that allows me to adjust the width. So in this one, I actually, I'm cutting out the 10, 12, but I, I've made it a little more narrow because I've realized a shirt that my son has that fits really well is more narrow than the design of this shirt. So or the pattern. So I made a little more narrow and then um, adjusted the length just a little bit, but those are really easy adjustments you can make to get the fit that's exactly what you're looking for. So um, go ahead and compare the pattern pieces if you want before you cut it out to shirts or clothing that fits really well, and that's a great way, whether it's a shirt or pants or leggings, um, to get the fit personalized just for you. So, all right, let's go over to the sewing and a couple of things so first of all i wanted to show you um i think i'm gonna have to change threads on a couple of my machines but i thought i would um give you a tip and i've shown you this before but i know a lot of people um you know, weren't watching a year ago or whatever. So I'm gonna show you how I change out threads on my serger. And you can see I've been sewing a lot of girly things. So I have cream thread on my needles and I have pink thread on the loopers. And I'm gonna go ahead and change that out to black because you can get away with using neutral thread on a lot of things, but I feel like black fabric is not very forgiving. And if we would see any of those stitches through, it would not be pleasant. So I am going to switch out to black and I'll probably be switching right back since I'm doing a lot of summer and spring sewing these days. And along those lines, yesterday, I think it was yesterday, I posted a um, spring fabric list. So I went ahead and made a list for you of all the places I have purchased this year or in the past um, spring fabrics and given you also some of the uses that I use those fabrics for. So if you're wondering what to sew for spring or where to buy spring fabric or where I buy spring fabric, you can go ahead and check out that list. It'll get you started. All right. So you can see that I took off the old thread and I left a long tail, at least six or seven inches on here. And that allows me to tie off the new thread color onto the old one. If you cut it too short, then it's too hard to tie those knots. So that is what I'm doing is I'm tying the new thread to the old thread with just a single knot so it's nice and um, small. And then we're going to go ahead and pull those threads through. And sometimes this, like right now, this is getting stuck in the tension disc. So I just have to go ahead and give it a little bit of a tug. And then the black is through, okay. So pull that through the tension discs and then back through. That's the second color. And I almost always have to cut the needle threads because they don't pull through the eye of the needle. But let's see, let me see. So pull them through the tension. Yep, so stick on the eye stick on the eye. Okay. So then what I'll do is just cut that. And 
And then I'll just re-thread the needle. So pull out enough. And I usually just do one at a time so I don't mix up which needle, which thread goes to, since I didn't start from the very beginning. And of course I need to trim my needle to get it down. I just had my serger serviced over Christmas and it's, it's just noticing it's already so fuzzy inside. But I guess that's par for the course when I sew a lot. So then after you have changed your threads, and again, I find this way easier than starting from scratch. I don't know if any of you have a prefer preferred method for changing your colors, but if I can do it this way, I will 100% do it this way every time. Okay, so once you get your serger threaded, I like to turn the hand crank a few times to test the tension. And if something is really off, you can usually feel it in your hand crank because um, it will be like really tight and it might start to or, or, or make funny noises. So if it looks like it's creating good stitches and it's flowing nicely, then you can take a scrap of fabric, which I just pulled out of the trash here. Let's take a scrap. I'm gonna try and sew on the same black fabric. and see how we did. So at this point I'll wanna check it and it feels like the needle tension is off because it is So we're gonna loosen up the needles a little bit. I had them a little bit tighter. So, and it, but we want this shirt to be stretchy, right? We don't want it to be. Loose. So this is much better. Okay, so we have a nice, stretchy stitch. My looper was off on this first bit. You can see how loose it was, but then I tightened it up down here and we're good to go. Okay. So hopefully it will play nice. Um, I have some thread and I need to just throw it out when I get to it, but some of my thread is, is old or something and it really, um, it just, it doesn't play well with the tension. So I just need to get rid of that thread and stop being mad every time I put it onto my machine. So hopefully that wasn't the case. So, hey Brenda. All right, so I see several of you um, saying hi. And I'm going to now take my fabric with right sides together, get together, which I feel like this black is, you know, I have to look very carefully at both sides to see which is which. And we're going to line up one of the shoulder seams and I'm going to start by sewing um, one of the shoulder seams. And then I'm gonna put the neckband on before I sew the other shoulder seam, just because I love to do it. So I see Linda checking in, saying hi. And like all of my free patterns, this one includes the normal 3 8 seam allowance. So you can go ahead and use that when you're sewing. All right, so one shoulder. now. It is going to be tricky. Black thread on a black shirt. You won't be able to see my sewing too much, but hopefully the final result, it's great. Okay, so next step is the neck band. You know, you all know that I like to just sew it on by feel. So I'm going to take my neck opening Start the neckband, which is also black. <laughs> Maybe I didn't think ahead for what was very conducive for you guys to be actually able to see what I'm doing. It probably just looks like a big blob of black. And I like to just sort of stretch it 
as I go around. Ideally, you're looking for a 10 to 20% stretch for a great fitting and a neckband that lays down really nicely. If you stretch it too much, you'll get puckers around your neck. If you don't stretch it enough, you'll get those weird neck bands that stand up, which that's not what I'm going through, or is wobbly and um, looks stretched out. So we don't want either of those options. So we do want a nice, Gentle stretch as we're sewing this neckband around. And just bring the neckline together and provide some shape for the top of your shirt. And I get, um, I, you know, I call this the, the boys um, t-shirt, but really it's just a boxier fit loose t-shirt and the girls version is more fitted. Either one can be sewn, of course, for boys and girls. And sometimes if I'm making like long underwear style or something that's going to layer under, I will use the more fitted version for my boys and vice versa for the girls. So take the names with a grain of salt and know that it's not obviously you all know you can use whatever you want for whoever you want just because it's named something doesn't limit your uses so i see a question about um, my serger thread and um i have had a couple of different um sources so i've gotten some direct directly from coates and clark for as gift, gifted to me, like sponsored. And then I've also ordered some from, is it Waywac? YWAC? It's W A W A K dot com. They're great. They have super fast shipping. I think it's even free over a certain amount, but don't quote me on that. And I love everything I order from there. And then some of what I have, which I think is the stuff I don't like, but I haven't yet officially ruled it out, is before we left Hong Kong three and a half years ago, almost four years ago now, I went to one of the fabric markets there and I stocked up on a number of things and big spools of thread was one of those things I did stock up on. So I actually think this yellow cone or pink cone might be from there, but I'm not sure. So I have just a random assortment of threads hanging around and yeah, I'm not always sure. So, okay, there is our neckline. Lovely, right? It makes my face all washed out, but you can go ahead and see the neckline. And my hands are, fingers are on the shoulder seam, so you can see that the front of it dips down just a little bit lower than the back. And now we're gonna go ahead and put in the sleeves. So I don't know if I marked or not. This sleeve pattern does actually have a back and a front. So I think this should be right. Okay, so I'll match the back with the back move this over here a little bit so you guys can see. And then I like to, this with knit patterns and with my patterns, I don't have notches on where to match your sleeves. So some people probably don't like that, but that's just the simplicity that I have used. So um, I like to start on both sides and work my way towards the middle, easing in the curves as I go. This black is super tricky to see right and, right and wrong side, but there is a right and wrong side, and I know if I mess it up, we'll be able to tell later. So I'm trying to be very careful on doing that. So some of my patterns have um, distinct back and fronts for the sleeve, and some of them are just cut on a fold and no back and front. So 
This one does have a back, and you can see when we get to the middle, it's all good, and we're just gonna ease in that curve. And now we have one sleeve attached. So you can go ahead and do the second sleeve. So I need to again find the back, find the right side of the fabric, which is trickier than finding the back, clip or pin it in, and then go ahead and do the same on the other side, and I'm working my way towards the center. So, yeah, the thread gets brittle. I also have, um, so the problem I have with some of my thread is that it doesn't adjust to the tension. So I don't know if it, if it doesn't play well with the serger or it doesn't play well with my needles, but somehow the combination of thread, and I actually have been doing okay lately, but I was having a streak where all of my needle tension was too tight. And so, you know, when you pull it, then it just pops, pops, pops. And I changed everything else, and I finally realized if I changed my thread, it was fine. So, again, I don't know if it was the combination of the needles with the thread or this machine, but not all, and not all thread is created equal. So if you've sewn with cheap thread or more inexpensive thread and you've sewn with a nicer quality thread, you will know what I'm talking about. There is a difference and thread is not something you want to overly skimp on. It, especially if you're sewing clothes that people are going to wear because who wants clothes that come apart, right? We want clothes that stay together. If I'm quilting, maybe I'm not as concerned, but um, yeah. Yes, black is the worst to deal with. All right, so there's one sleeve. So you can see put in. Oh, if I hold it up, you can see a little bit through, which is good. You can see how the sleeve is put in. Let's go ahead and sew the other sleeve. I try not to sew too much with black, but it's a little bit hard to avoid if I'm actually sewing with black fabric. I often just try to put in neutral fabric or neutral color. Like all winter, I think I had a brown on here and I pretty much sewed everything with brown thread and then for summer sewing, I'll put in a cream or a light pink and I'll pretty much sew everything with that one color thread, everything that I can. So I actually only very occasionally change out my threads, not very often. But I know some people always like to have their um, thread matching. That is not me. Okay. So now we have, it's looking more and more like a shirt. Okay, so you can see the sleeves. Oh good, so you can actually see the sleeve seams there. This is a very, I think it's a bamboo cotton. It's actually a pretty slippery material, but it's so soft and actually really, really lovely to wear. I'm gonna go ahead and sew the side seams and then we'll move over to my cover stitch where we also have to change the threads and um, hem the sleeve in the bottom, and I'll show you the finished result. So I just love how easily these t-shirts come together, although I will admit, full disclosure, when Old Navy has a $5 t-shirt sale, I buy them. So I don't make all my kids' shirts. I'll make them for special occasions or if we need one in a certain color, but honestly, for $5. And I really, the Old Navy shirts are nice and thin, and so my kids really like them because it's just a nice, soft, they're not like a thick, heavy material. And the boys really like sort of that thin t-shirt knit, which this one is definitely thin. Um, but for $5, seriously, I can't even, 
buy the fabric nor put in the time, even if it only takes me 20 minutes to sew up this shirt, it's not worth it. So that's my sewing confession or lack of sewing confession for the day. Buy the $5 t-shirt. We like them. I didn't see, Kathy, I didn't see what Gertrude said there. Right, so now we can turn this right side out and we can have a pretty awesome t-shirt start. We need to, and like I said at the beginning, I did make this one a little bit more narrow than the pattern calls for, for the 10-12. Um, but it was because I held up a 10-12 that we liked that I like the fit of, but you can see how it's really cute and coming together. So we are going to move over here to the cover stitch. And let's see, let's put some black thread on this. Now, do I have to change the looper? or can I just change the needles? You think the white is, I think the white might be a big, a bit too harsh on here. Huh. I'm actually gonna steal, we have, I know, and so many people do. If I had more space, Kathy, I totally would, would do that. But I don't have, you guys know, I don't have a ton of, space for my sewing things and I try not to take up the whole house with my sewing because I already take up half of our living area. All right, now a cover stitch is way, way, way easier to thread than a serger so I don't bother pulling the, um, I don't bother pulling the threads through like I did with my serger. I simply thread it because it's not nearly as finicky as the serger. And I don't know why, because as a whole, I find this machine very touchy, <laughs> right? This is my, if I have a machine that causes me angst, it's this one not always behaving, but threading, threading it is not the problem. So I don't know. Once the serger is threaded, it's beautiful. This one, the threading is easy and then the sewing is what I always have to deal with. Who's with me on that? All right, so I am only putting on one of the loopers. I'm not going to do the top looper as well. We don't, we don't need that um, look. So what's the difference between the two? Are you talking about... <laughs> Wanda, you can do it. You can do it. Um, okay, so who just asked? Um, about the difference between a serger and a cover stitch. So a serger sews the inside of the seams like this, the inside of the shirt. And it is, it also cuts off the seam allowance. So you're left with a neat, easy, beautiful seam. Whereas this is only really for hemming and top stitching. It doesn't actually sew the seams because it simply is two or three needles on the top 
and then a looper on the bottom, which makes for a stretchy, professionally finished seam. And if you were to look at a t-shirt that you bought at a store, or really probably any knit item that you bought at a store, you will see that it is finished with probably a cover stitch because you have two or three needles creating the hem and then this looper on the back going back and forth. And the only way to really create that is using a machine like this. So this is for finishing more than anything. And the serger I use to sew my actual seams because it creates a nice stretchy seam. So you can do all of what I'm doing on just a normal sewing machine with a knit stitch or a zigzag. And then for finishing, I like to use a twin needle, which recreates this look without actually having this machine um, pretty well. The look is actually very similar. The functionality, I think this is a little um, bit a little bit more durable of a seam uh, if you can get it right. Like we said, this is definitely can be a little finicky. All right, so what I do is whoop, when I come back around to where I started, why did you get all messed up there? Trying to see if it's skipping stitches. Sometimes it does. When I get back around to the beginning, I like to overlap a couple, maybe an inch of where I started sewing and then I'll go down and then I lift it, pull it back and then I pull it forward. So actually then I'm going over my stitches like a triple time, kind of like a back stitch, just a little bit. Then I lift my needles and I lift the presser foot and I pull those threads forward and then I chain off. And by pulling those threads forward, you get the needle to create loops in the back that you can pull. And I, I definitely have some knots going on here. But I pull those needle threads to the back and then I tie them off. So the machine manual simply says what do we got going on here? The machine manual just says overlap your stitches. It doesn't say anything about going back and forth. It doesn't say anything about um, tying off, but I like to do both of those things just to secure this so it doesn't come off. So then once I pull those needle threads to the back, then I just go ahead and tie it off before I cut it. Okay, so I don't know if you're gonna be able to see this, but you can see, mm, that one has a little bit of tunneling. Let's find a nice spot. Okay, so there is the seam on the front. You can see it's stretchy. And there it is on the back with that looper that just goes back and forth. Okay, so let's do the arms and then we are finished. Let's see, looks like one needle came unthreaded. Sometimes I think when I'm fighting with it to chain off, um, one of them gets pulled short. So I always do check before I go back to sew again if both needles are threaded. And you can see I'm not um, pinning up the hem. I just kind of like to fold it under. So the bottom, I'll probably do a three-fourths inch, and then on the sleeve, I usually do about a half inch, maybe a tiny bit more for the arm hem. And with this machine, it has two needles, and I'm trying to um, sort of cover that raw edge with, cover the raw edge with my stitches. So this not only hems or finishes, but it also 
yeah, kind of finishes those raw edges. So if you don't have knit fabric or you're using a fabric that does fray, you can also use this to help to finish those edges. All right, so I take my pin, grab those threads, chain off. Sometimes this thing whacks my fingers, which it just did. That doesn't feel good. Pull the needle threads to the back. Black on black, it's not so easy. And then go ahead and tie those off. And another sleeve is finished. So, sorry, I haven't been watching if you've been asking questions. Okay, so really nice. there on the inside and that even the black fabrics and the eggs so it's looking this hem sleeve looks really nice Ooh, that is wrinkly you can see how wrinkly it is when i hold it up to the light that's the one thing this bamboo cotton is very soft but it i have had issues with it um being super wrinkly and my kids do not fold their clothes. They just all get shoved into a drawer and that's the way we do it. But so then a shirt that comes out of the drawer wrinkly is probably worn all day wrinkly. So I definitely prefer fabric that's not as wrinkly. And you'll get that more with some of the synthetic fibers. So if you're using 100% cotton, or this I think is organic cotton bamboo, it is of course a nicer fabric feeling wise, but, or I guess it depends on what you're going for. But you will deal with some of those issues like wrinkles that maybe you wouldn't if you had some other synthetics in your shirt. All right, so we are about to be done with this t-shirt, lickety split. I love how quick it comes together. Let me just tie these off. and uh, make myself a note to order some more fabric to make my boys t-shirts as I realized don't have a big selection today. All right, whoops, I'm trying to turn you guys a little bit so you can see. All right, so here is the final result. And I think it's so cute. So you can see it just looks like a regular t-shirt. So anyway, that's how quick and easy it is to sew a basic t-shirt. And this is definitely a boxier fit, but perfect for my boys and what they're looking for. So again, I adjusted the width just a little bit and the height just a little bit based on a t-shirt my son has that fits him really well. And that's what I was looking for. So I hope you enjoyed that. Super simple, super easy. I'll be back next week with another fun sewing tutorial. I can't remember what I had down, but I've planned out my list. So hopefully it's something that we can um, sew up and it'll be super fun. So now I'm off to change the black back out of my serger because I probably won't need black again till fall. So have a great Wednesday, everybody. I'll see you next time. Thanks for joining. Bye.